Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do another fractal tone tutorial and this is based on a video I released a few weeks back and it was just a cover of John Mayer's Helpless Solo off of The Search for Everything. Um, before we get started with that, please subscribe to the channel if you are liking my content and hit that little like button and the notification bell to let you know when all my videos are popping up. I really, really do enjoy uh, recreating some of these tones, especially the John Mayer stuff. If you're wondering why John Mayer, uh, he's kind of what got me into guitar almost 20 years ago and I just really love his style and his tone. So that's why I do it. Um, and I've just spent so much time geeking out on this stuff. So we're going to uh, get right into it, but um, just before we do that, I guess, um, using my mic little SX Custom. And with this song in particular, uh, we know that John uses uh, his Silver Sky, and then in 2017 when he went on tour for the Search for Everything, he was using his 64 uh, vintage Strat, and most of the time it was in the number two position, so the bridge and the middle, the out of phase position. So the only way to get that on this guitar is to split the Lawler Imperial here and then put it into that out of phase position. So best we can do, but with these pickups, uh, the way that they're balanced, there's really no perceivable volume loss. So um, we're going to go ahead and dive in and uh, find out how I cre recreated these tones. So here we are in FM3 edit right here. And here is my signal chain. Um, we can forget this drive block right here. I did not use it at all for the solo. Uh, we just used one drive block and some chorus and the amp, the trusty two stone, the two rock J35 and some of my usual cabs. And then we got uh, kind of a slapback, way huge aquapus style uh, type of slapback delay. And for the reverb, we're using a large room. So if you listen to the recording of this song, he employs another kind of miking technique that I uh, talked about in my video on how I dialed in uh, the something like Olivia tone, which is definitely a lot of room mic technique. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that similar approach in here. So let's go and start with uh, the amps, or the amp. And we'll turn everything else off, okay? This is pretty much what I use on everything. So nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. So if you've uh, gone through some of my other videos on how to dial in a clean sound. This is it. Uh, it's almost on the edge of breakup, not too much, but we do know John's tone isn't like crystal clean. That was like way back in the day and like uh, any given Thursday era, it was like crystal clean. Uh, these are the settings. And then going all the way down to dynamics, nothing in the dynamics tab. So for that, this is what you see. Uh, that's what you dial in for the clean sound. And then for the cab, we're using my two favorites. Um, I was chatting with someone on the Fractal Forum about this. And once you find some cabs or IRs that really uh, connect with you and you're playing, like you just like to stick with them. And especially for this John Mayer sound, these work. So we have the four by 12 rumble, and then we have the G1265 with the room mic going, set to ultra res. And then preamp section, we do a low cut. You can do even lower depending on uh, what you're monitoring through, if it's a FRFR or through uh, headphones that need a little bit more bass cut. And then for the room air tab, uh, this is my standard setting, 22%. And then I'm I've been really liking the room shape to be on room instead of hall recently. So let's go ahead and uh, just play a little bit. We're not going to be playing the solo for this part, but... So 
So you really hear a lot of that room feel. And if you listen to uh, the rhythm part on this song, it's definitely that out of phase position, but you hear a lot of that slap back as well. So we're gonna go ahead and play some of that too. Uh, this is dialed in a little bit for that octopus type of delay. We know that John uses. Uh, it's hard to recreate that. Uh, there's, I had the Mark II Aquapus a long time ago, and there was really just something about it. It was uh, warm, but it didn't feel like over-modulated or anything. So this is set to 90 milliseconds, and we just did 0.1% for the feedback, uh, just to give it something, because you really do hear a difference when it's on and when it's off. And it's set to 18.5% for the mix, and you'll hear it. So especially on those upstrokes that he does, you hear that little uh, that little give in the in the signal right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and engage the reverb block. So different than what I'm used to using, I really do like the South Church reverb, uh, but that's more for like that ambient type of uh, John Mayer thing. Um, but this is the large room reverb and it's set pretty minimal on i think it, this is its uh its stock setting on the time so 1.25 seconds set it to normal and then i believe i dialed the size back a little bit just to uh, give it a bigger sound you almost want to it to sound like you're just sitting right in the room but the mic is maybe a little bit further back and then from there just dialed in the mix a little bit, um, a little bit above the uh, stock setting. So let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so that's kind of the rhythm sound for this song, but we really wanted to talk about the lead sound and uh, John used a 80s full tone kind of tri-chorus unit uh, for this solo. Uh, not sure exactly what he used for the drive, but we're going to assume it was like a TS-10 or something like that. So we have we do have a stereo tri-chorus in here, so we're going to engage that. Uh, I left everything um, pretty much stock except for the depth and the mix. I just dialed those into taste. Now in the sob rock uh, era, he's using that uh, Boss CE2, and there's really a big difference between these two. Uh, obviously a tri-chorus has a lot more width to it, which is what we need for this song uh, and for the solo. If you listen through some headphones, the stereo width of his solo is very, very wide. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, Let's go ahead and just play a little bit. So really wide right there, but I think where everything really um, comes together is in the, when you add it with the drive. And kind of what we're going for is these uh, almost like overtones. Uh, when you listen to the first solo on Helpless, you really get that. Uh, it's almost like it's squealing in a way. So this is the full thing, um, everything engaged. And if you want more gain, obviously you can, uh, you can do a little bit more with it, um, like adding a drive before, or you can engage uh, the input boost as well. Um, here are kind of my basic settings for the drive. And then go into the diodes. I really like these new diodes. This was from the firmware 5.0, I believe. And then I adjusted the bias up just a tiny bit. All right, so here's everything all together. And I have the uh, 
the tone knob for the bridge rolled back just a tiny bit. I would say it's like on eight and a half. <laughs> overtones uh, I don't know it's something about it that when you get to the higher strings and you really rake into them uh, the note just kind of starts squealing at you but that's uh, that's basically it that's what I used for the intro clip the solo for John Mayer's Helpless uh, as always in the comment section let me know if there are any other type of tones you want to uh, hear me recreate and see it in your fractal unit. Uh, but even if it's not John Mayer stuff, I like to experiment as well. All right, friends, we will see you next time, and I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy dialing in the stone. See ya.